All, yeah. Everything that we find in, in the Synoptic Gospels, we, we find in the various versions of the same stories in the, in the Quran. It's a, it's a fascinating thing. But to me, it, it just seems that what we have in the Quran very clearly flows from an oral retelling that has been shaped by the overriding concern of the author in regards to what he considers to be improprieties in relating certain things. It's fascinating to me that, for example, Nathan mm -hmm. is still sent to David yes. in the Quran, and David repents, but the sin's removed, yeah. as yeah. if somehow yeah. that accomplishes something. All we're told is that David repents. Well, nobody knows why. Well, everybody knows why, yeah. uh, but the Quran just simply won't narrate uh, the grievous sin that David committed. غربا 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 David yes. in the Quran, and David repents, but the sin's removed, yeah. as yeah. if somehow yeah. that accomplishes something. All we're told is that David repents, but Amazing. nobody knows why. Now, David, of course, is one of the heroes of the Old Testament. And, uh, of course, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, Sunday school pictures about David and about Goliath. And, you know, I like to make slingshots uh, because we thought, you know, David was so good with his slingshot. It must, must be a powerful little weapon. Nice to have one. And, uh, you know, we devised a, a nice little one that was just a little rubber band with a little paper. And we used that to tease the girls in class. But don't tell anybody I said that. <coughs> Uh, now, of course, again, we weren't told the whole story. David knocked down the giant with the slingshot. But the rest of it, which can be read in the Bible, is that then he went and beheaded Goliath with the sword. But there's more to David than just this. David, uh, we find, uh, wanted to get uh, married to, to Saul's daughter. Saul was the king. Saul says, okay, if you want to marry my daughter, bring me a hundred Philistine foreskins. So David goes out, he and his men, and they slaughter 200 Philistines and bring back the foreskins and counted them out to uh, Saul and said, okay, now give me your daughter. And so Saul gave him uh, his uh, daughter Michal uh, to be his wife. So David, of course, did better. He was apparently not uh, too hesitant at uh, slaughtering. Uh, by comparison, if one were to look at the story of David in, in the Quran, the story of David in the Quran again is about a peaceful prophet who it, uh, recites beautiful tunes and uh, the birds sing along with him. Uh, David is very peaceful. So the Quran gives us a very peaceful image, whereas by comparison when we look at the same story, the Bible gives us an image of violence. Now Dave just spoke to us about uh, an incident which is reported about the prophet Muhammad on whom be peace that he saw uh, the, the wife of his adopted son and he became attracted to her. That is not in the Quran. So a Muslim may take that story or leave it. Many Muslims think that is a fictitious story. Muslims themselves came up with stories to romanticize the life of the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, in part to justify their own lechery sometimes. But the story itself, as Dave recounted it, shows that the Prophet Muhammad did not do anything with that lady until her husband her, his, himself divorced her, the usual waiting period was over, which, so all of the formalities were done. And then the Prophet Muhammad married her, took her as his wife. So everything was up and up and all decent. In the Bible, on the other hand, we read about David. And of course, he's a man close to God. It says that he was a man after God's own heart. Uh, David uh, saw the wife of Uriah, Bathsheba, as she herself was taking a bath. Isn't that curious? Bathsheba taking a bath. Anyway. 
And he became attracted to her and he sent for her. And he being the king, of course, she could not refuse. She went to his palace and she conceived. Now, what was to be done? Because eventually Uriah will come back and find out that his wife got pregnant while he was out in battle. So David sent for Uriah to be brought back in. And David said, okay, go home, you know, take a break and so on, hoping that this man will go home and uh, have uh, intercourse with his wife. And so when he discovers that his wife is pregnant, he will think, ah, that was when I came back home for a vacation. But this man, being faithful to the king and faithful to the, to the country, said, I'm not going to go home. I cannot go home while my comrades are out in the battlefield. I must go back and fight there. So the man went back. But David sent a letter with him, sealed, instructing the general to place this man in the front lines and to all fall back from him so that the enemy will kill him. And this was done. So we have two different images of David. One in the Quran, one in the Bible. In the Quran he is a peaceful person, you know, singing tunes. In, in the Bible he's quite violent.